Okay, so the entire point of this video is to help you subtract any two fractions or mixed numbers. And the way I want to show this to you really takes into account, you really need to know the definition of what it means to subtract. And when you subtract two numbers, it means you are finding the distance between them on a number line. And I know you're probably thinking, well, for this problem here, I don't really need to think about that. I know what 5 sevenths minus 2 sevenths is. But just think for a second. If you have 2 sevenths, you know what's to the left of the number line when compared to 5 sevenths. And I just want you to think about the distance between them. You have 3 sevenths, 4 sevenths, 5 sevenths. That's 3 sevenths uh, is the distance between 2 sevenths and 5 sevenths. Think about that. If you add 2 sevenths and 3 sevenths, you'll get to 5 sevenths. So yeah, the answer is 3 sevenths. Start off with an easy one, let's get a little bit more tricky. Same idea. You don't have to write out the number line, you don't have to make it perfect, but you know that 1 6 is to the left of 3 4. And you want to find the distance between them. Except this one's a bit trickier because these two fractions don't speak the same language. This one speaks 6 ish, this one speaks 4 ish. Uh, and the mathematical way of saying that is that we need to find a common denominator. So when you write the fractions down here, and we think to ourselves, what can go into 6 and into 4? That's right, the answer is 12. And here's, here's the important part, though. Uh, in order to create equivalent fractions, so 1 6 is equivalent to 2 twelfths because you multiplied it by a whole. And in this case, the whole looks like 2 over 2. But down here, the whole can look like 3 over 3 as well. 3 fourths times 3 over 3 equals 9 twelfths. Now that we've created uh, a common denominator, all you need to do is make sure you recognize that 1 6 and 2 twelfths are equivalent, and 3 fourths and 9 twelfths are equivalent. Okay? So, once you know that, you're thinking about the distance between 2 twelfths and 9 twelfths. 3 twelfths, 4 twelfths, 5 twelfths, 6 twelfths, 7 twelfths, 8 twelfths, 9 twelfths. You're right. The distance between 2 twelfths and 9 twelfths is 7 twelfths. That's our answer, 7 twelfths. All right, two more problems to go. This one looks a little bit scary. Uh, you have three holes minus 3 eighths. Just think about where they are on the number line. 3 eighths is to the left of three holes. This one's a little bit trickier, though, because it's going to take a few jumps to get there. And the first jump you need to think about if you have 3 eighths, you want to figure out how much does it take to get to the next hole. Okay, so if we count by 3 eighths and go 1 eighth at a time, that goes 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, 8 eighths. That's 5 eighths away. And remember, 8 eighths is one hole. So let's just take a look. 3 eighths plus 5 eighths makes 8 eighths. 8 eighths equals one hole. Now to get from 1 to 3, that's simple. Go to 2. That's one hole away. 2 to 3, that's another hole away. And now all you need to do is find the sum of these jumps. That's 2 holes and 5 eighths. There you go. Now for the final, uh, and some say the trickiest one, two mixed numbers, 4 and 4 ninths minus 1 and 2 thirds. Same idea, 1 and 2 thirds is to the left of the number line. When compared to 4 and 4 ninths, and we just have to figure out our jumps uh, to get there. The first jump. We're at 1 and 2 thirds, and we want to go to that next hole. The next hole number after 1 and 2 thirds would be 2 holes. How much do you need to get from 1 and 2 thirds to 2 holes? Counting by thirds, you would only need one more, because 1 third and 2 -third thirds, that makes a hole, and then you have another hole right there, so 1 and 1 makes 2. We'll do some bigger jumps from 2 to 3, that's a hole. From 3 to 4, that's another hole. Then we have this last jump from 4 to four and four ninths. And that seems trickier than it is because all you're doing, as you can imagine, is just adding a four ninths. So, last step, we just have to add up all of these fractions. But as you can see, we have the same problem we had before in another question, where these two fractions don't speak the same language, you need to find a common denominator. So, same idea, you think to yourself, what can go into three and into nine? And in this case, it's a little interesting, because the answer is 9. Uh, but remember, 1 third equals 3 ninths because we are multiplying it by a whole. And in this case, the whole is in the form of 3 over 3. 
four ninths, you really didn't have to do anything to, to multiply it by one over one, which is the same as a whole. So now, looking back up here, we can make one third into three ninths, and now we just add it all up. Three ninths plus a whole plus a whole plus four ninths makes two and seven ninths. The final thing, any time you are subtracting fractions, I really want you to use the counting up method doing these little baby jumps and the bigger jumps, uh, and you will not go wrong. As always, please call if you need help. Thank you for listening.